when I did my last update on my no-till slash no-day garden, I told you all about the difficulties that I was having. But having just harvested these two nice cabbages from the no-till garden, I think it's safe to say that things are starting to look up. Let's talk about it and let's talk about what I'm doing to amend this no-till garden to make sure that it can keep getting better and better. Let's get going. Hello everyone, thank you all so much for joining in. This is the Lumpany Trini Gardener channel and I'm so glad you could make it for this video because we're going to be doing a update on my no dig slash no till garden. For those of you new to the channel, I started this little project here, which is a concept called no dig. It's basically where you cover the ground with something that will cut off light from weeds. In this case, I use cardboard. On top of that cardboard, you would put something like compost. In this case, I use wood compost which caused some problems to me because, well, I put wood compost at first. It caused some problems to me because it really was not full of the nutrition that I wanted for my plant. So I started off initially with just pure wood compost on top here. And then I, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's just this little area here, very short, um, small little area. But basically I just didn't have much success just using pure wood compost. So then I had done a top dressing of wood compost again fresh wood compost but this time i mixed in some cow manure some well cured cow manure and when i talk about well cured i'm talking about four five six months of the manure curing and that's when things started to take off in the no dig garden and i'm so happy to report that even though a few of the things that i initially planted didn't do so well i am happy to see peppers growing up the seasonings have always been green. Even when I considered it to be a fail with Jesse Wood Compost, the seasonings have always been here. But I also have some cabbage, which I'm very, very happy about. There were two tomato plants, which you would have seen if you saw, and I'll link it up here. I'll link both videos. The video, which was the initial no dig, no till garden when I was setting this up. And I'll also link my garden tour, which at the end of, I gave an update on the no till garden. And I'm just so happy to show you all where we have gotten because those of you who've been here a while, you know where we started from. And now we are seeing some kind of progress. And if you stick around, I'm going to be adding some more compost. Some wood compost, some fresh wood compost. I'm actually sitting on it right now. And some cow manure. Again, to the top of this bed. Because that's what you do with no-till. You basically just have, you have your ground, your natural ground. On top of that, you put your cardboard. Cut off the weeds. On top of the cardboard, you put your compost and then you plant into your compost. And then over time, obviously your compost is going to get depleted, you know, just washing away and also just organisms eating it down, right? And then on top of that, you just put more compost and just keep on building, building, building until you have a nice garden bed. My no-till garden is very, very shallow. It's not even six inches, right? It's probably at this point, some places could be as little as two inches, which is not ideal. But remember underneath, the where the cardboard was the cardboard would be eaten out by now there is the actual natural ground which is full of nutrition it's just that i didn't want to plant directly into that because the idea is to suppress the weeds and put compost on top and then grow into the compost not growing directly into the ground because some of the plants might not have done so well if i had planted into the ground directly because it's you know it's hard soil here not the best but into the compost starting off and then the roots being able to go into the ground after. That's one of the tricks that works really well with the no-till garden concept. So I'm going to bring you all closer, introduce you to some of my plants that have been doing fair enough in the no-till garden right now. You can see here that this is the actual ground, the actual natural soil, which is looks, I mean, just by the look alone, you can see that it's really, really hard. So hard that it's just cracking. It's lacking organic matter. It's just pure mineral, um, just deposits there at that point, just pure clay, really, really hard. Not the best. And then here is where the no-till garden begins. See it's compost on top. And then these are some of my plants. So we have some bandanure which I did not plant. They just grew up here. Right. So I'm really happy that they're doing well. I think this is some kind of citrus. I don't know if it's a lime because we do have a lime tree nearby. And I also do have the habit of just throwing seeds just all over whenever I eat like a putigal or orange or whatever. So I don't know what it is. I don't think I'm going to keep it. I'll probably just give it away to someone who would want that. Um, but over here on this side, I have a pimento, which um, I just grew from seed and I just put the transplant inside there. Not expecting it to grow really because at the point in time, nothing was really growing well in the no-till garden when I had just started out, but it's coming up right now. This is a volunteer plant. This is a bird pepper, 
It's a very hot pepper. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's tiny, but it packs a massive, massive punch. You want to be careful with it, but I mean, any Trini is going to tell you that this is the key to making basically anything taste good. Any kind of talcari, you know, like tomato stroker, any kind of, you know, olive choker, whatever. You just have one blue pepper inside it, changes the entire game. Really, really good plan to have. And I'm so happy that this grew up just on its own. Um, and then over here, I'm really happy that there is another pimento. Right, I'm gonna amend the bed because you're seeing the leaves starting to yellow a little bit. That's you know a lack of nutrition. So when I amend, hopefully that will cure that problem. And over here I have my two cabbages that I grew from a transplant um, that I had. Had it left over. I just put it inside here. I didn't expect it to really grow, to be honest. At the point in time that I planted it was at the kind of low point for no-till garden because things just were not doing very well. But um yeah, they are they're, they're here now and i can harvest them they're not the most massive of cabbages but again i'm now this garden bed is just around seven eight months now right so as it develops it's going to become better and better and better that's what you get from a no-till garden the soil itself is put into a cycle where it can continuously improve and become better you know month after month year after year because i'm not introducing any kind of chemicals into this here this is pure fungal a bacteria dominated compost where it is nature that is doing all of the growing here it's not me providing nutrition really it's me providing the habitat for microorganisms to do all the work and to be honest that's the way nature grows trees in all of the rainforest and that's what we're trying to replicate here in this garden of course i'm making mistakes along the way which is expected but it's a really cool concept and i encourage all of you to try the no-till garden to try at least a little section to do no-till garden. May not work for everyone, but definitely for me, I think that it is, um, it's coming along. I think it's just going to get better and better. To be honest, I'm really optimistic about this because I am seeing some um, progress in the no-till garden. All right, so we're going to go now into the um, amending part. So I have some wood compost here that I will show you all. And this is wood compost that I bought, like, I think it's like five bags for $20. Um, sorry, five bags. $100 so $20 per bag right when I say wood compost I'm not talking about wood chips right it's very it's very much broken down wood basically rotten wood that's what you want because because you want it pretty much ready to be planted in right that's what wood compost is it's wood that's rotten down and then you are able to use that and have the nutrition in that's in the wood be released and then the microorganisms that have been breaking down the wood they're going to help supply those nutrients to your plant that's what you want and then over here, I have my stash of cow manure, right? To the back here is basically where I have the manure that recently came in. Came in like about two, three weeks ago. So that is what I'm going to be leaving for probably another three, three months, three, four months before I actually touch that. But to the front here, I pulled back all of the older ones that I had. And these have, like this set here, has been here for probably about... I don't know about six months now so it's really well cured so i know when i put it onto my plant it's not going to burn my plants at all all right so we're going to apply that now before i actually amend the bed i think i'll pull out these two cabbages they're basically ready you would remember from my cabbage harvesting guide that when you're harvesting cabbage you just want to make sure that you check the head make sure the head feels nice and firm which these do could probably firm up a little bit more but i think it's it's time right it's at the end of the world and i mean it's not the biggest cabbage it's pretty small so you might be tempted to think okay you're gonna leave it longer and then it's going to get bigger that's not always the case in this case here i know the length of time this cabbage has been in the ground which is just around 110 days that's a really long time for cabbage if i leave it for too much longer then this could actually crack or you can see pests and whatnot attacking it here i mean it's 100 percent organic so pests are going to love it it's going to be sweet to them and if i leave it any longer then i could risk losing the head to something you know something that would really devastate the head right so i don't want that to happen so i'm going to have is that out now Oop. i'm pulling it out at the roots there we go cool there we go and there we have a cabbage i'm going to peel this back and have some cold slow some homegrown cabbage and then some coleslaw. So it doesn't really matter to me if I cover some of these um, bandania and that kind of thing. If they're with their salt, 
they're gonna push through and survive i'll try to pull them through as well using a rake to spread it around it's supposed to be in a rectangular kind of shape but um that hardly ever happens i don't really worry too much about it okay next i'll do a bucket of this cow manual this dunk it right on the top same thing using the rake to spread it around then i will actually step on it when you're growing in pure compost you don't have to worry about compaction the way that you have to when it's like topsoil and that kind of thing because there's just so much organic matter that it maintains the structure of the soil so that means air and water will continue being able to pass through it's never really going to run out that's what you get for growing in compost entirely and i compact because i don't want it to be overly fluffy because if you think about it the roots if they don't have some kind of resistance when they're pushing down like if there's zero resistance then they don't actually become very strong and they don't have that anchorage that a root will get if it does have to push a little bit to get into the soil there you go and we're going to wrap it up with one more bag of the wood compost and there you go it really is not that difficult or complicated at all to amend your no-till no-dig garden some fresh compost ideally i'd be using green waste compost but i don't really have access to that at the moment i have my compost pile but it's still cooking it's not quite ready yet so i much rather to just use what i have here if you're wondering why i use wood compost and cow manual a mix rather than just one or the other i have found that the wood compost is really good for water retention because it just holds on to so much of moisture so you don't have to worry about your plants drying out as often at all and then less um less water having to be used as well and the cow manual is really good for the nutritional part of it once it's well cured cow manual you're going to be fine and remember as i said well cured for me my definition of well cured is at least five six months of your cow manual some people use it even beforehand and you know it's fine but use it at the wrong time it could introduce pests into your garden soil and it could also burn your plants so i rather to be safe than sorry i'm not planting anything into this no day garden today mainly because i don't know what i want to plant here um, even though i could if i had wanted to i could have planted directly into the soil that i just amended here um, there's no waiting period but i am just going to hold off and decide exactly what i want to do uh, with this spring space but when i do i'll post it either on instagram or on tiktok so follow me there if you're not just yet i really hope that you enjoyed this video and more importantly i hope that you learned something from this video i hope it's going to encourage you to start your own no-till no-dig garden and if you already have your own no-till no-dig garden at home then leave a message in the comments tell me how is it going what kind of compost are you using what kind of plants are you growing how is it you know how's the entire experience been for you i'll be really happy to know remember that you can follow us on instagram tiktok and on facebook for more content coming out of the trini gardeners garden remember if you know someone who would be interested in growing more healthy organic food for themselves and their family then share this video with them help them out we could all use as much help as we can with getting nice fresh healthy food that's on the cheap in these kind of times as always this has been dylan from the trini gardener channel reminding you to get up and get green take care